Google, look a bit more interested, please. Hello and welcome back to the Outer Hebrides and welcome to episode two of How to Hebrides. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the ferry routes. We're also going to be taking a look at the best routes to the ferry ports themselves, especially if you're driving a motorhome or towing a caravan. And then finally, we're going to be taking a look at driving on the island's roads and cycling on the island's roads. So to kick off, let's have a look at the ferry routes to and from the Outer Hebrides. All ferries to and from the Outer Hebrides are operated by Caledonian McBrain and all ferries are roll-on, roll-off ferries so you just simply drive straight on and drive straight off. The ferries themselves are now getting busier than ever especially in the summer months and it can't be stressed highly enough that you really do need to book well in advance. You can do this online at calmac.co.uk or you can give them a call and the great news is even if you've booked an advance and your plans change you can change your reservations without charge that's right so if you want to come home earlier or later you can phone them up and change onto a sailing that has availability and you won't be charged for changing your reservation it's also worth bearing in mind that CalMac has a very transparent pricing policy, so no matter how far in advance you book, whether it's five minutes or five months, you always pay the same price for that crossing. You may notice as you're browsing the CalMac website that there are tickets available called hopscotch tickets. These are great for island hopping where you can book an entire itinerary on just one ticket. Traditionally, hopscotch tickets used to offer better value than buying all the crossings separately. However, these days they don't represent much of a saving and be aware that a hopscotch ticket has to be used within 31 days. If you're planning on a longer trip or you fall in love with the islands as many people do and wish to extend your stay above 31 days you may come a cropper. You may do better just buying single crossings as you go along. So to talk you through that process here we are on the CalMac website we're on the summer timetables tab and we're looking for a crossing from Ullapool to Stornoway so we go down to the Outer Hebrides and here we are Isle of Lewis, Stornoway and Ullapool and then we check down and here is where you can find the timetable and the prices. It's at this point I'd like to bring your attention to that text at the foot of the web page about the size and weight of your vehicle. If your vehicle is over three and a half tonnes or is above the sizes given, you may be required to travel as a commercial vehicle. This is not only far more expensive than these tourist rates we're seeing, but also you have other issues such as the requirement of lashing points. This could be a problem if your motorhome is over three and a half tonnes. However, you also have to think if your rig is that much larger, how suitable it is for driving on the narrow island roads. If you're not sure about your vehicle being a commercial vehicle or not, please check directly with CalMac. Assuming you can travel as tourist traffic, you can then click on the tab at the bottom to buy tickets. That takes you to the ticket buying page. It's all quite straightforward. You need to know which islands you're going to. So for this Ullapool to Stornoway crossing, that's Outer Hebrides and the Isle of Lewis. And then of course we select Ullapool to Stornoway and select the dates and after then it's fairly straightforward. As you need to know which island you're going to, let's now take a look in a little bit more detail at the routes to and from the Outer Hebrides. Taking a look at the routes to and from mainland, there are five routes in the summer to Lewis, Ullapool to Stornoway, to Harris, Uig to Tarbert, to North Uist, Uig to Loch Maddy, to South Uist, Maleg to Loch Boysdale, and to Barra, Oban to Castle Bay. Now let's take a look at those routes in a little more detail. We'll start with the route between Ullapool and Stornoway in the Isle of Lewis. This is perhaps the most popular crossing to the Outer Hebrides and for very good reason. 
Ullapul is very easy to get to from the central belt. We'll go into access to the ferry ports later on in this video. For passenger services, there are two departures each day in each direction, so it's a very convenient timetable. You'll normally find a time that suits you to cross. One of the greatest things about this crossing is the ferry itself. The vessel is the Loch Seaforth. That is one of Calmac's newest large ferries, and she holds rougher seas very well indeed. In conditions that would have made lesser ferries be cancelled, the Loch Seaforth can still reliably ply the crossing. As such, the Ullapool Stornoway crossing is one of the least likely to be cancelled due to rough weather. Now we move on to what's often called the Uig Triangle. That's Uig to Tarbot in the Isle of Harris and Uig to Loch Maddy in the Isle of North Uist. This service is operated by my personal favourite ferry, the MV Hebrides. However, she is due for replacement on this route within the next couple of years. Departure times vary on a day-to-day -day basis, however you can normally find a crossing at a time that suits you. One of the main advantages of one of the Uig Triangle routes is that they are the cheapest crossings to and from the Outer Hebrides. However, while the drive to Uig is stunningly pretty, it's not quite as straightforward as the route to Ullapool. Now we move on to the route between Mar Lake and Loch Boysdale in South Uist. This service is normally operated by an oldie but goodie, another one of my favourites, the Lord of the Isles. The Lord of the Isles, or Lottie to her friends, offers the best open deck on any ferry to or from the Outer Hebrides, so she's a great choice for wildlife spotters. Mar Lake is also the best port to choose if you wish to combine your visit to the Outer Hebrides with a trip to the gorgeous Arshnamurakan Peninsula. Unfortunately, there are two downsides with this route. The first is the timetable. The arrival into Loch Boysdale is rather late in the evening and the departure in the morning is at a viciously early hour. And the second is that this route is the most likely to be cancelled in the event of rough weather or mechanical failure. Finally, we take a look at the route between Oban and Castle Bay in Barra. This is CalMac's longest non-stop sailing at 4 hours 45 minutes, normally operated by the MV Isle of Lewis. However, on a Wednesday, you can also travel to or from Tyree aboard the MV Klansman. One of the main advantages of this route is the fact that Oban is the closest port to Edinburgh and Glasgow of all the ports that serve the Outer Hebrides. There are a couple of downsides though. This is another route which is susceptible to cancellation due to bad weather and mechanical failure. Also, the last time I travelled on the MV Isle of Lewis, the dog area had no windows and that's a bit grim on a crossing that extends to nearly five hours. Checking in and collecting your tickets. Be aware that check-in for vehicles closes 45 minutes before departure on routes between the mainland and the Outer Hebrides. If you're travelling out of Ullapool or Oban, you will normally collect your tickets from check-in as long as you arrive for your booked sailing. Travelling from Uig or from Mar Lake, take your place in the vehicle lanes first and then pop to the port office to collect your tickets. Now let's take a look at the onboard experience aboard a CalMac ferry between mainland and the Outer Hebrides. As mentioned previously, all CalMac ferries are roll-on, roll-off. You'll be clearly directed by staff members both shoreside and on board where to park your vehicle. Once you've parked up, put the handbrake on, leave the vehicle in first gear and please remember to isolate the car alarm. If you're renting your car or your motorhome, please make sure that the renter explains to you how you can isolate the alarm before you take the vehicle away. Screeching car alarms not only disturb resting crew members, they also upset any animals that also may be travelling on the car deck. Speaking of animals, the official line is that pets should preferably be left in the car. But if your pet does not disturb other passengers and is well behaved, you can take them upstairs to one of the dog lounges inside or you can take them out to the open deck. However, dogs are not permitted in any area where food is served like the cafeteria or the coffee lounge. 
Speaking of the cafeteria, every large Calmac ship has a mariner's cafeteria serving fresh tasty Scottish produce including gluten-free vegetarian and vegan food. The macaroni cheese is legendary and I personally can speak for the falafel burger and chips which is gorgeous. You'll normally find a coffee cabin where you can get a decent cup of coffee and a slice of cake. Sometimes this doubles as the Calmac shop to pick up the essential Calmac bear. And upstairs you may find an observation lounge. Dogs are not permitted up here, but it's a lovely place to stretch out and enjoy the view. Moving on to traveling between the islands themselves. There are two ferry routes. Leverborough in Harris and Burneray to the north of North Uist, and then Eriskay to the south of South Uist to Barra. In Lewis and Harris, the smaller islands of Great Burnera and Scalpe are connected by bridge. However, in the Uists and Barra, the smaller islands are all connected by causeway. The bridges and causeways are all free of charge to use, there are no tolls, and they're open 24 hours a day, regardless of the tide. The inter-island ferries are roll-on, roll-off, but they do have very limited catering facilities, so you're advised to eat before you board. At Leverborough, that means a visit to the famous Butty Bus or to the lovely Anchorage restaurant. In common with all the ferries between mainland and the Outer Hebrides, access to the car deck is not permitted on the ferry between Leverborough and Burneray. You have to go upstairs and take advantage of the lounge or the outside area. If mobility issues mean you require the lift to get upstairs, let the crew know as you check in. There are no catering facilities at the Burneray Ferry Pier, but about five minutes walk away is the Burneray Shop and Bistro. The ferry between Eriskay and Ardmore in Barra is normally a single deck ferry. This means you can remain with your vehicle if you wish. There are no catering facilities at Eriskay, so make sure you grab a coffee from the Eriskay shop or maybe something a little more substantial from the politician before you board the ferry. Meanwhile, at Ardmore in Barra, you can grab a barista coffee and a slice of cake at the ferry terminal. Now let's take a look at a few of the routes to and from the mainland ports if you are driving a large motorhome or towing a caravan. There's only one road to avoid in Scotland if you're towing a caravan or driving a larger motorhome and that's the A82 between Tarbert and Crinlarich on the northwest coast of Loch Lomond. Despite the fact that this is a two-way road, it's a major trunk route, it is universally hated by caravanners and motorhomers because of the tight twisty turns, the sheer rock face on one side and the drop into the loch on the other. The route is heavily used by goods vehicles and tour coaches and often they come hooning around the corner in the opposite direction at high speed, leaving you nowhere to go. Friends of mine have lost their motorhome mirrors and generally it's a stretch of road best avoided. The route to Ullapool from the central belt is the most straightforward. You go up the A9 to Inverness and then across the A835 to Ullapool. That's all there is to it. If you're driving to Uig, it's worth taking a minor detour to avoid that nasty section of the A82. From Glasgow, I take the M80 M9 to Stirling, and then the A84 A85 to Crinlarich and Tyndrum. From there, you take the A82. It's a stunning drive through Glencoe to Fort William. From Fort William, it's the A82 to Invergarry, the A87 to the Carl of Lachausch and across the Sky Bridge to Uig. Be aware that there is no toll on the Sky Bridge. An alternative to this route some people prefer is to take the A9 from the Central Belt to Dalhwini. From there take the A86 to Speen Bridge, the A82 to Invergarry and then as before. Just be aware though that in places the A86 can be a little bit narrow. To Mar Lake, take either of the previous routes to Fort William and then the A830 directly to Mar Lake. Remember that as an alternative to driving over the Sky Bridge, you could also get a ferry from Mar Lake to Armadale and then drive to Uig for one of the Uig Triangle sailings. 
Finally to Oban, once again the recommended detour from the central belt is M80 M9 to Stirling, A84, A85 to Crinlarik and Tyndrum, and then the A85 through to Oban. As an alternative from Glasgow you could take the A82 up the side of Loch Lomond to Tarbert, then the A83 to Inverary, and then pick up the A819 north to get onto the A85 to Oban. However, be aware that the A819 can be narrow in places. Many of the roads in the Outer Hebrides are single track with passing places. These are really easy to use. If you notice oncoming traffic, before you meet it, you pull over at the first available passing place. This might be on the right hand side of the road, but normally you would still always pull over on the left. If you notice traffic behind you, then pull over at a passing place to allow it to pass. However, make sure that that traffic has a clear view of the road ahead to allow it to pass you safely. Don't pull over just before the brow of a hill or a bend. Personally, I find it easier to drive in the Outer Hebrides than I do on busy roads on the mainland when, when there's traffic behind you, there's nowhere to let it pass. On a single track road, you can let the traffic pass and carry on at a nice relaxed pace. Speaking of the pace of your driving, do remember that there are lots of sheep in the Outer Hebrides and they're quite partial to wandering out in the road in front of you. Drive at a pace where you will be able to avoid a sheep if it does wander out into the road and be prepared if lambs are around that they often dart into the road to go and rejoin their mother. Sheep are very commonplace on the roads in the Outer Hebrides and as long as you're very careful around them there is no need to stop at every instance. Just remember the golden rule and that is sheep really are quite stupid. <coughs> Now let's hear from PC Phil Farndell of Police Scotland based on the Isle of Barra. I start off by asking Phil if it's ever acceptable to use a passing space on the right hand side of the road. If the pullover space is on the right hand side we would advocate that you use it but only in safe circumstances to allow the vehicles to pass you on the left. Same again if you're travelling the opposite direction, there's no issues with doing the same but always be aware of the safety of yourselves and the other road users before you facilitate that type of manoeuvre. You actually saying it's okay to use it on the right? Yeah, yeah, you can pull into the right as long as it's as long. See if you're driving that way and the space is on the right, you can use it, but as long as it's safe. So normally, 90% of the time, you would stop on the left. You're never very, very far from a, a parking or pulling space on your near side. The only reason you'd really use a space on the right is if there was an emergency vehicle behind you, so the likes of the Coast Guard we have here the fire service, the police service, ambulance service as well um, for a type for an emergency otherwise always safety is paramount pulling on the left hand side. I'm glad you mentioned that Phil. I understand there are a lot of volunteers who may be responding to an emergency call who may not have blue lights. How will they tell people that they're in a real hurry? Um, usually what we do is the locals which work on the lifeboat, the RNLI, or the airport, the fire service as well. As um, you are saying, Andrew, they don't have the blue flashing lights or the marked vehicles like we have here as well. So what they'll do is they'll usually indicate by flashing the lights and usually sounding the horn as well. Um, don't take it as a sign of frustration or aggravation. It will be someone that's trying to get as part of their emergency duties to one of their stations as quickly as possible. Now, a lot of people are coming over, they're renting large motorhomes. Is it sometimes necessary to reverse? Would you say it is, it's essential to know how to manoeuvre that motorhome before coming to the islands? Yeah, absolutely, Andrew. What would kind of advocate is that um, you don't hire the motorhome and then immediately come on the ferry over to the island because the nature of the roadways here, they're very, very narrow. Um, just one vehicle at a time. What I, what I would hope and expect folk to do is if they hire the vehicles is to maybe ask who they've hired it from for a, a driving course, you know, uh, the skills of re parking, reverse parking, forward parking, parking in confined areas as well. So please be aware that these vehicles, there's a lot of blind spots on them and the rear view camera doesn't cover all. So take some lessons before actually arriving on the island or even before leaving the um, hire company's facilities. Both the Caravan and Motorhome Club and the Camping and Caravanning Club do do manoeuvring courses and I shall link to those in the description below. 
Finally, Phil, in episode one, we had Mari Thompson from Outer Hebrides Tourism telling us about using campsites rather than parking on the Macha. Do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, we'd much rather. Um, we do have some beautiful, beautiful campsites all facilitated around the island and would much rather that folk did use the, the facilities that were there as well. The, um, the nature of the island, one of the reasons it's so beautiful is because it's so delicate as well. It changes colour throughout the season. Uh, we get some extremely rare wildlife, um, insects, birds, everything coming to the island as well. And the nature of the Macca is that it's very, very fragile. It's just a thin layer of sand and soil, which once damaged, um, there's no coming back from it. So although a lot of folk believe they're only parking there for two days, if you take that as someone parking there for two days, but over the space of a four month period, that's a lot of damage that can be done to the, the fragile areas that we have here. And a lot of them are our SSI, areas as well so you can see for yourselves the kind of the type of fragile nature that we have on the island here that's for, you know, for protecting but also for enjoying that is brilliant thank you very much phil you're more and than welcome, uh, yes Andrew. so uh and next time you're in barra give phil a wave when you see him cheers <laughs> phil thank you you're welcome finally we talk about cycling on the islands and to do that we head to stornoway in the isle of lewis for a chat with alistair at bespoke cycles what I tend to recommend for cyclists, if you're in a bit of a group um, and you're on the uh, the double lane roads, is by all means feel free to ride two abreast. You know, it's um, it's perfectly legal. Um, what we would tend to say is if things are getting a bit busy, if the roads are busy or uh, or the roads narrow down, then maybe move to single single file uh, group. But don't be afraid to ride two abreast. It's uh, it's perfectly legal. Um, and in fact, what it does is it actually forces the car drivers, lorry drivers to overtake as they should, which is giving you one and a half meters clearance, essentially taking you as a, as a, as a car. Um, that's how you should be treated when you're on your bicycle. Things become a bit more complicated when you move on to the single track roads. Um, what I would tend to recommend again is that you don't tuck yourself into the edge of the road, the verge, because what you're doing is you're inviting cars to pass, to drive past you. Uh, inevitably that means that you're then forced off the road into the verge and when you've got luggage and what have you it just makes things a wee bit more dangerous so what I always suggest is that people take up the lane um, you know you're, you're perfectly entitled to it um, but in cognizance of that what I would also then say is if you see traffic coming either behind you or in front of you that you pull over into the passing places don't think you can miss that one and, 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 and get on to the next one. Pull over as soon as you can really, um, as soon as it's safe to do so. Um, and that way, you know, the car drivers aren't delayed too long because the passing places are fairly regular. Um, and it means that people aren't delayed too much. Don't tuck yourself into the edge of the road because it will invite cars to, and camper vans, they're the worst because they're so much wider, um, to squeeze past you. Um, take up the lane, but pull into the first passing place available to allow traffic to pass by you. I mean, we're all allowed on the roads, um, so, you know, let's all, let's all smile and be happy and wave, and uh, there's no reason to get annoyed about things. Uh, another five minutes isn't going to make any difference to so, anyone. Especially day. in the Hebrides. Absolutely, we're all pretty laid back, so um, why stress out a bit? You know, enjoy the cycle, but be, be aware that there's other people using the roads. And if you think you're going to be cycling anywhere in a hurry, think again. Here's PC Colin Scott with his experience. Myself and my good lady went on a cycle ride on our days off, um, and what I'd like to reiterate to uh, the viewers for this is, on the Western Isles, although it's absolutely beautiful, um, be prepared that the, the journey may take longer due to the, the many single track roads and letting vehicles pass by safely. Okay, so that brings episode two of How to Hebrides to a close. I hope you found it useful. I think the main point to make is that as the islands are getting busier, it is becoming more and more important to book, both book your ferries in advance and to book your campsite in advance. And as the roads are getting busier, to be more considerate to other road users while you're driving on the island's roads. Please come back and join us again next time when we start taking a look at the islands in a little bit more detail. And we're going to start with the Isle of Lewis. In the meantime, a huge thank you to Outer Hebrides Tourism for supporting this series. And a huge thank you to Adria UK for sponsoring this series without influencing the content and also for the loan of this gorgeous Adria Twin Supreme van. 
please do check out Adria UK and their gorgeous range of vehicles. I'll leave a link in the description below. And I'll also leave a link to Outer Hebrides Tourism, to CalMac Ferries, and to further information about safe driving on the island's roads. But in the meantime, it just leaves me to say from Dougal and from me, thanks for tuning in. Dougal, look a bit, Dougal, look a bit more interested, please. He never smiles. <laughs>